Mm-hmm. You are going to send your whole random Excel curve. If you are going to study random Excel curve, that's the default quick sort of curve. So in quick sort of curve, if an, if an array of elements is given and if you want to sort it, you have to uh, do sorting by using three functions. One is select, a selected file of elements and partition the array into two. And because you will call the quick sort uh, array for array function for both the left hand side and right hand side are, are let's, so let's expand this uh, process first selecting your pivot element so initially we are selecting the pivot element as either the first position element or the last position element now we have to partition it for partitioning we have to compare uh, the pivot element with each and every other elements in the array so for comparison we are uh, taking uh, two markers, one is i marker which is in the left hand side marker and j marker which is in the right hand side marker and i marker will be compared with pivot element and if that value is greater than the pivot element then it will stop. j marker will come decrement if this value is greater than pivot element but if this value is lesser than the pivot element it will be stop. Okay. So let's start here i points to 7 which is greater than 3, so i will be stopped. Now come to j. j is pointing to 14, which is greater than pivot, pivot element, then move. Okay, next. Right, that is uh, move back. Right. So now j points to 10, which is also greater than uh, pivot element. Now come to j equal to 2, which is lesser than pivot element, let's stop. Already i is stopped in this position, j is stopped in this position. As these uh, i and j value, when you are comparing the values of these, i is lesser than j. In that case, we have to swap the values of i marker and j marker. So 2 will come to this question and j will come to this question. Again, we have to repeat this. i will be moving forward and i will point to 1 which is lesser than 3. i will point to 4 which is greater than 3. So it will stop here. Then uh, from the j, uh, j is pointing to 2. Now it is pointing to 4 which is greater than 3. So next decrement j will come to third position which is pointing to 1. Now when you are seeing the relationship between i and j, now i is greater than j. So we have to stop and choose the uh, j position value that will be swapped with pivot element and pivot element will be coming to the third position. So this is the final position for the sorted, uh, for the pivot element 3 in the sorted array. So, if you take the elements in the left hand side of this pivot element, all are lesser than pivot element and all these elements are greater than the pivot element. So, this is the concept of quick sort. So, only the pivot element is compared with all the other elements and once if you partition it, the elements present in the left hand side will never be compared with the elements present in the right hand side. So, these two concepts you have to keep it in mind. So, uh, what is the kind of complexity of this quick sort? In the case of best case bar complexity is if your chosen pivot element is the center element every time it divides element into two equal size array and it will be having n by 2 n by 2 elements. It, if it, in each level it keeps on going like this for every recursion and if you draw the tree you will get the uh, final one element array at, at the height of log n. So in each of these elements, each of these levels we are doing n comparisons. So total number of comparisons n log n. In the case of first case partitioning, if the array is in descending order, if you choose the first element, every time it will compare with n minus 1 elements and it will move to the last position. So n will go and the pivot element will go to the last position and that alone will be in sorted order. All the other n minus 1 elements are in unsorted order. So every time only one element will be sorted and the remaining elements are in unsorted. So total number of comparison is 2, 3 like that it is going on and the first level it will be n minus 1 number of comparisons will be here. So uh, if, uh, the summation is summation of n minus 1 natural numbers which is n minus 1 into n by 2 which is theta n square. So we have to reduce this first case time complexity we are going to randomize quick sort. So as the final position matters we have to choose a uh, pilot position based on the random function. So that all the elements can be equally likely be selected. So uh, here 
in this randomized quicksort algorithm a is the element array array and p and r are lower bound and upper bound and first we are checking whether p is less than r if it is less than r call this random partition function choose the pivot element and swap it with the final array uh, find i element uh, a of r and return a comma p comma r right so now that is going to be the truth question and all the elements lesser than 2 will be in the left hand side and call this uh, randomized quicksort for the left hand side array similarly call the randomized quicksort array for the right hand side array so uh, there is a chance to pick each and every element using the randomized function and this pivot element is equally likely to be for any of the input elements so these uh, output and time complexity is also depends on this random function so we are using linearity of expectations and if you are assuming x1, x2, xn are random variables, then expectation of choosing that random variable is sigma i equal to k n e of xn. So, expected number of total comparisons in partition is uh, if you are having n number of uh, elements and uh, if one of the element is a private element, it will do n minus 1 comparisons. So, in the second time, it will do n minus 2 comparisons like that. Okay. So, uh, here uh, the summation of i equal to 1 to n minus 1, uh, sigma j equal to i plus 1 into n, x and j. So, this is the comparison for, uh, this is the total number of comparisons performed by this algorithm. Okay. So, uh, we have to calculate what is the probability of uh, choosing that algorithm, uh, comparing this, how many comparisons would be that possible. Right. So, if uh, you are taking this z i and z j, as we have discussed uh, before uh, in the previous slides, z i will be compared with z j, every element is compared with z other elements at most once, first condition. And second condition is only the pivot element is compared with all the other elements, right. If the element is, if one element is present in the left hand side and other element is present in the other, other uh, array means, never, it never be compared. So these two cases are there. If the pivot element is in the upper uh, lower bound i and between the uh, lower up lower bound z i and upper bound z j, then z i will never be compared with z j because x position will be in the center means this z i will go to the left hand side array, z j will go to the right hand side array. And if either z i or z j is the pivot element, then there is a chance to have one comparison. Okay. So if you are uh, Taking this uh, comparison of either one of ZY or ZJ to be the uh, pivot element, we have to take all the elements in between I and J. So, the total number of elements between I and J is J minus I plus 1. For example, random of 3 comma 5 means 3, 4, 5. Totally 3 elements we have to take. So, here J minus I plus 1 will be taken and there is a probability for ZY to be pivot or ZJ to be pivot. So, 1 plus 1, 2. So, 2 divided by j minus i plus 1 is the probability of choosing z i or z j is the as the pivot element. So, only if any one of that is the pivot element, then only there will be the comparison. So, you will be having 2 by j minus i plus 1. When you simplify this, you will get it as sigma i equal to 1 to n minus 1 log n, which is n into log n comparisons. So, this reduce, this always produces it as a sigma n or big O of n log n which is reducing the worst case time complexity of the normal code. Sorry. Thanks.